It's time to play some iRacing, sponsored by Cooper Tyres, the official tyre sponsor for Laguna Saka. And I'm going to be driving the Spec Racer Ford, which uh, is a bathtub without any water in it. But it's also quite a fun car to drive in iRacing, partly because it's one of the more active cars and also because it's slow as hell. So when you're talking and driving, you're not as likely to crash. Now, unfortunately, Shadow Play doesn't work too well with iRacing, so I've had to resort to the old fraps, which means I'm recording at 75 FPS, but at half resolution, which means half the graphical fidelity. Now, let's jump in and see what iRacing is like today. They've just released an update uh, to iRacing with a bunch of new tyre updates for a whole bunch of cars. I don't believe this car has had a tyre update with this update, unfortunately. But I did try the Star Mazda earlier on, which has had the tyre update applied to it, and it does seem to have improved things somewhat with the car seeming to when it gets into like a four wheel side on slide when you over egg the corner the car seems to be slightly more forgiving has a little bit more play in it and to me it feels uh slightly more believable and a slight improvement though i only only put about 25 30 minutes into it which isn't enough to really appreciate the more subtle changes that i'm sure exist so laguna saka Spec Racer Ford. Um, not sure what to expect. This is a. It's quite a, like I say. It's quite a slow car, and as a result of that, you often end up with quite a lot of really bad drivers uh, and big crashes at the start of the race. So at the start of this race, the the goal sponsored by Mothers, Polish Waxes and Cleaners. The strategy is to avoid the accident, the inevitable accident take my time and slowly potter on through the field until I get into first place then when I get the first place uh, position I'm gonna hold on to it uh, drink the champagne and take home with me some beautiful women that uh, appreciate all the money I've got of course that's what I do in real life because I'd have loads of money but I don't so I'm playing I racing on a simulator and uh, you don't get anything to play in this apart from uh, less money in your bank account and the and the uh, harsh reality dawns on the iRacer but it's really enjoyable to play online especially with these cars and it's fun just avoiding crashes and getting the uh, safety points taken off you for driving off the track which I find is a little bit harsh in iRacing uh, fair enough if you bump into people or you spin but the track cutting point penalisation is a little bit erratic at times. One thing I really like about iRacing is uh, when you're behind someone, like this guy in front of me now, uh, you can pick up or you can see that all the subtle physics movements on the back of the car. Not so much on this track, it's not massive bumps, but on the more undulating tracks you can see all the movements which is really nice and uh, often ends up with me driving into the rear of the car in front because I end up staring at the, the bumper and their suspension rather than actually concentrating on driving. Now the physics in iRacing, I'm assuming this car hasn't had the new tyre model, uh, even with the new tyre model I find it a little bit, a little bit pokey uh, but uh, still really good and still sort of in the top you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good solid simulator. Um, most of the cars in it, that you know, there's nothing really massively wrong with any of them. Uh, and it's, it's just as good or bad as any of the top simulators, really. And you even get a Goodyear blimp floating in the sky, which is nice. When's this race going to start? Three seconds, right. This is where the, this is where the hot stuff happens, because... Uh, Nothing happens in a warm-up, really. Hopefully, it'll, presumably, it'll auto-grid me. Now, I haven't set the... It's as if I'm sat on a bar stool in this car because I haven't set the camera view properly. Okay, well, um, over, so I really need to adjust that, but it's too late. We're just going to go for it and see what happens. Um, just pretend that I'm a very tall person. Now, this should be interesting. I haven't 
done this track for a while actually I don't think uh, not properly at least so I'm going to take it very easy uh, this car I think it's, it's nice it's a nice alright car it's not a bathtub need to turn the taps up a bit because it's getting cold could do some more warm water better be careful not to burn my toes here we go Mazda Raceway Laguna Saka race one full grid which is fantastic and that's one of the really great things about iRacing if it's a slower cars you often end up with a good number of people online uh, and at this point in time every other simulator seems pretty dead online so if you want an online race off the cusp iRacing is your only real choice here we go red light no brown light red light all oh, red lights not one at a time all red lights and it's go, go, go at the Mazda Laguna Saka Raceway as he doesn't change up gear fast enough. I find it really hard to tell the correct rev to change in this car. Probably because my face is 10 metres above the car. But as the cone goes in the air, okay, take this easy, let them all crash into each other. Yeah, you go, you go right. I'll just sneak your beat down here. Put it around here. Can't see anything, need the Oculus Rift. Ah, I'm going to get rear-ended if I'm not careful. Stick over here. <laughs> Don't scratch my bathtub, it costs a lot of money. The force feedback is quite nice in this. You can feel the track rumbling. You get a good feel for the car loading. And I remember the first time loading up iRacing. The force feedback was incredible compared to anything at the time. I mean, when iRacing first came out, I guess we're all playing R Factor and Live for Speed. And I do really like Live for Speed, and but at that point in time, I racing was a massive leap. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I was just totally. I was wasn't even look concentrating. Oh dear, the guy put his brakes on. I didn't think he would. Yeah, when when I racing came out, it was a massive leap over the other driving titles. I must have spent a fortune on it. I don't really play this so much now because I'd rather either play in a league race or just. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> that was a bit. Oh, that was a bit stupid of me there. Either play in a league or um, just I just do casual pub racing, which is fine for me, or hot lapping. Oh, sh that was really bad of me. Oh, I should be punished for that, really. Uh, for some reason, I ended up skidding a lot more than I thought I would. And the, mo the lesson there is to uh, learn the grip levels of the tyres before doing a public race. I feel a little bit guilty for doing that. Oh, well. Hopefully he's not too angry at me as I drift that corner. I don't know if I've done any damage to my car. I mean, it didn't feel like I hit him particularly hard. I kind of sideswiped him, but it, it often depends on the uh, the net, your ping, that person's ping, and what the server is seeing as to how hard you end up hitting them. Uh, it didn't swear at me or anything, so I assume maybe I didn't actually hit him that hard. It just seemed bad from my view. Oh dear, there goes the guy. <laughs> oh, the poor guy nice birds there in the distance whoa whoa what <laughs> yeah there's one thing with this is that the bumps on this track seem to absolutely destroy this car you see he went over the bump there and it put a massive <laughs> dent in the back of his car which didn't make much sense but what are you gonna do the other thing I think a lot of people struggle with is that you can get in a, what, where's he going? He's off to the chippy! <laughs> Seen a bargain there and he's off to get it. Um, the cars in iRacing, when you get into a slide, there's a very specific slip angle in which the cars are very controllable. And then there's just this brick wall fall off where you've lost control and you might as well, you might as well just smash your face into the steering wheel because you're not getting the car back. Um, but as long as you stay either under the limit or if you go over the limit, be very committed and snappy on the steering. I race is actually quite, quite forgiving. 
I, I do find that the sideways grip that's a bit hard to explain like when you're sliding in a bit of a drift you can you can carry on a bit and you can get stuck in slides a bit as is common in a lot of simulators um, but as I said that seems less that seems to be happening less and less with each tire model implementation I said whoa <laughs> what are they doing people seem to get on the deck oh that's one thing I noticed I'm getting really excited here I'm, I'm moving up through the grid my champagne and my virgins uh, virgins sexy women they don't have to be virgins uh, it's waiting for me I've lost my train of thought now. Oh yes, a big, <laughs> a big thing that seems to have improved is that the grass seems, or sand in this case, seems less slippy in this car from what I remember. Maybe I'm imagining things with that, but that's the impression I get. Oh, he's gonna, I'm gonna let him go in front here. I, <laughs> it's a really dodgy corner where, oh, he's letting me go. There you go. I raised an etiquette there. <laughs> I let him go, and he let me go. The, the curvature on the corners on this track uh, are really uh, evil in that they, they kind of force you into someone that's next to you that if they're not if they're not accounting for the subtle curvatures in the in the in the track you'll end up just driving into them because you're running out of road and they won't notice you just have to hope that the other people racing on the track um, are aware of how much track you have and a lot of the time people aren't, especially with these slow cars. You're in the top 10, the where's the guy, he sounds Australian. It's like a mixture of Australian and American. This guy's been really, really safe on me. He, he, I mean, he could have done me quite a few times. This is one thing with iRacing is that Sometimes you get really nice clean racing, um, but a lot of the time you get this really timid racing, like with this guy here. Uh, he's, been, he's been clean, so that is a really good thing, and you can't really, you can't really be that critical of it because it. You'd rather have someone be clean than someone than be dirty. We are in bathtubs after all, but, 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 but the point is, what I'm getting at here is that if I'm in a racing game, it is a game, it's not real life, I want people to really challenge and push. Uh, same thing's happened again. And that I guess that does happen at higher levels and you need to rank up. But pretty much all the levels I've ever played are racing at and friends of mine who've played at the, in the uh, Formula cars at a higher level than me, it does seem that people are generally quite timid. Uh, maybe overly so. Which can ruin the excitement or, or the challenge of racing against other people. But what are you going to do? I can't wait to play this with a with a decent headset that actually works properly. Uh, an Oculus Rift, maybe the DK2 will be good enough, but the, the consumer version, just playing proper multiplayer driving simulator, this and a set of course especially, even R Factor 2 actually. It will just be so good being able to look around the cockpit properly with a high enough resolution to hopefully be able to see the track in front rather than it being like a, a cataract sim simulator which is what it's like driving with a DK1. I need to speed things up, my best lap is like two seconds off the pace. Still got 11 laps to go. I'm 8th, there's no rush. We seem to be catching up with people somehow. I'm preserving the tyres. I'm not driving slow, I'm saving the tyres. Just like modern F1. This guy's car is a bit wonky actually. If I get up on the inside of him up here, maybe, uh, maybe he'll drive into me, we'll see. No, he's let me go through. Thank you very much. These people do seem a bit slow. I mean, I this is my first time driving this track in ages, and I'm really far off the pace. But I guess it's, it said about 60 people have joined, uh, so I guess I must be uh, I must have joined based off not having played before. So it's probably put me with uh, lower skilled drivers. 
I'm not exa exactly sure how the I rating works and how it tears you up, but I know it does group you by skill. Which again, it's really nice. There's loads of things about in I racing that are really well done and really help it stand out from the other simulators, which which in many regards make it, it even if I racing physics stayed the same, which they won't. Um, and even if it is massively over overpriced, in my opinion, uh, and even if other simulators come out that are, are, are better in many regards, the thing is, I racing is always going to have its own little popular following just because of the general framework and the fact that people have committed hundreds of dollars to it but it's always going to be it's always going to be its own thing outside of other sim games which is good and bad but at least we'll all worst case zombie apocalypse will always have our racing go pro be a hero You don't need to break for this corner, I'm not sure why everyone is. Well, if I can get past these people without crashing into them, I've got a good chance for uh, first place here. Now, if people have a, a say, a sub 100 ping in our racing, then the net code is really good. If people start getting above. 100 ping then they start flashing on and off and it's an absolute nightmare that was really really sexy how he skidded around that corner there I'm not actually going to make a move on him, I'm just teasing him tickling him on the side, hoping he'll laugh and uh, go into the wall I think I have something wrong with me so I really like how these cars look from behind and the wing mirror sticking out but hey <laughs> the red guy's catching up. Probably because I'm driving it five miles an hour. Need to get past these people. Get a move on. Get a move on. I've got ginger beer next to me that I really want to drink. But I'll, I'll, I'll get a sip of my ginger beer when I've passed these two guys. One thing I really like about the iRacing physics is that um, the cars under the limit are really agile and if you do dab the brake and you do come off the throttle you do get really nice subtle movements uh, and to be fair that's you know that's fairly standard for a, for a decent simulator but I just find with the default car setups without any fiddling the cars are set up reasonably well I don't think you can even change the setups with these uh, spec racer forwards anyway or the, or the Mazda I find with the when, with the uh, open setup events. Oh dear, I just followed him. <laughs> that was really newbie. Oh no, they say you cut the course. Whoops. Does he think I drove into him? Because I, I didn't. Oh, maybe it was the guy in front of him broke, and that's what caused him the issue. That was really bad. Uh, it's got a name where you just follow the guy in front of you. Pilots do it. They'll they'll be a they did this in World War Two. They'd be flying behind another plane, and that plane would uh, they'd be shooting that plane, and that plane would crash to the ground. They'd just follow it into the ground, or they'd be playing in front would be more agile than theirs, and they'd have, they'd get so focused on on their current objective they forget the actual parameters of the plane and end up crashing. We see it in real racing as well, where people will just follow each other off the track when the second guy didn't need to. I forgot what it's got. It's got a term to stick it as a comment. But that's that's put a bit of a that's put me a bit behind that that racing incident there. Let's try and focus and uh, bring things back. Our team needs uh, needs a top three position, otherwise I'm gonna lose my sponsorship. Which I need to be able to afford the uh, six hundred pounds worth of tyres for next week's qualifying. Probably even one actually. We'll say the tyres in it. I guess probably like no, it probably is about six hundred pounds for four four tyres, as long as you don't buy it at the track. So six hundred pounds. 
and you're going to need what a set, a set two sets for quali and two sets for the race so two thousand pounds <laughs> maybe maybe not that bad but for this type of car for, for other cars obviously it costs loads more come on come on too much break I'm not quite. I don't quite get a feel for how much grip the tyres have in our racing uh, on the braking. To me, it often feels a bit erratic because I don't think you can feel aspects of the the grip through the force feedback. Whereas in uh, in a set of Corsa, I find that you get a really good feel for how much grip the tyres have when you're on the brake through how the force feedback responds. Which is strange that you could get. You could get an idea of tire grip from a, just a left-right feel off the wheel, but I definitely struggle in I racing. Mind you, I'm using a G25. I'm sure if you had a servo wheel, uh, you get a lot better feel in I racing, as I've been told by people. Definitely helps to drive this car smooth to get fast and I'm all over the place. Don't know why the spotter said uh, the guy in front's in first, uh, I think yeah, uh, he's had a bit too much to drink there. If I pass this black car, I'll get a sip of my ginger beer. Not drinking tea, already had too much today. It's ginger beer. That's non-alcoholic. I wonder if you have their ginger beer in America, if they drink, uh, not ginger beer, what's it called, ginger ale, I think that's what they have in America. It's getting a little bit tedious now, seven laps to go. I think these, in terms of pure enjoyment, uh, these races might be might benefit from being a little bit shorter. They're saying that you need the longer race to sort of, you know, get the effects of tyre wear and uh, be able to exploit people's mistakes. I, I think I generally just like sprint races though, especially for pickup online racing. I like to just jump in and do a couple of sprint races and then you kind of get hooked to it. And then if you're going to do a full length race, I think leagues are better for that, where you really planned a, a weekend, you've got a strategy, and you you know you're doing the whole shebang. I guess our racing offers an in between. But as you get to faster cars, you have to do longer and longer races. GoPro get really good uh, marketing deal out of this game. Just think how many people are doing laps in our racing on this track, and they must pass that GoPro advert 17 times each race they do. It's amazing that in-game advertising isn't worth more on these sorts of games. As I go straight on again. You get quite good ad, ad revenue on Facebook games and uh, mobile games. Don't well, depend on the deals you do, but I wonder what the figures are for something like a sim game. Maybe uh, Maybe that's where race room are making a good chunk of the cash. I think my tyres are buggered because I seem to be <laughs> they seem to be very slippy on the braking now. And I'm dropping back. I could do better than fifth. I should be on uh, my lap should be about two seconds faster, I need to concentrate a bit more. It's definitely a lot harder talking whilst you drive. In some ways, you don't notice it, but it does uh, when you're actually doing it. It's like texting and driving in real life. You just don't notice where you're making mistakes. I'll probably watch this video back when I'm uploading it. And I'll be able to see all the blatantly obvious things that I'm messing up. One of the things on Laguna Saka that I really like about its track is a lot of the corners uh, are very flowing corners. 
and it's especially that one which is passed through there with the with the hill section afterwards it, it magnifies the effect of how well you took the corner in terms of your time and the punishment for messing it up and I, I love tracks that have that sort of setup. And I don't know the corner names, forgive me to learn them all. That'd be a little bit sad. Then again I'm playing the driving simulator so I'm definitely sad. Driving sims are only only slightly removed from sitting on a train platform noting down train numbers whilst wearing an anorak and drinking soup from the thermos. I'm not gonna catch these people. I am driving too slow. But I'm in a bathtub so nice and clean. Oh. Well, that was strange. That was just really weird how the car spun and kept going. <laughs> I was like a full opposite lock. That's one of the things with iRacing, some some of the spins just don't feel right to me. As long as you, I mean I was probably doing something wrong, but as long as you stay within the car and you, you know, you're within what would be a good lap time, it's, it's not going to happen. But then if you're side by side racing with people or, or you're really, for some reason, pushing it, that's when I think you notice some of the things with iRacing that are less enjoyable. Who knows if it's more or less realistic, but I find when you get into some slides, they're just not enjoyable. Oh, it's, it, it feels inconsistent, which which is which is which is what's not satisfying. The most satisfying cars and driving sims for me are the ones that seem to feel the most consistent. But hey, there's so many variables changing; it's hard to know what causes what in a lot of situations. Never going to get a sip of my ginger beer now. It's my punishment for not overtaking the guy in the black car. One minute 45. Totally, uh, totally off the ball here. That's one of the, uh, another really nice thing with eye racing because of the race length or, the, or just the general nature of it. It can be quite relaxing and hypnotic. I can imagine someone that's uh, if you've just got a sim rig in a separate room and you can only dedicate, say, 40 minutes, 30 minutes a night to sim racing, and you want to jump on, you get back from work, you want to jump on a sim at 8 p.m., do a single race, uh, and that's it then iRacing offers that I think better than any other sim at this point in time where you can schedule yourself around it in a certain way as long as it's not the really fast cars and it's the more popular cars then it really is really good for that I think as soon as you start getting past the Star Mazda the fields thin out too much for it to be a really for it to be a jump on simulator like that but most people to be honest aren't going to be driving cars faster than the Star Mazda so, oh, I lie actually, the um, prototypes are often quite busy as well. So, anything slower than a Star Mazda, and then the prototypes or whatever car happens to be randomly popular, and you're good in our racing if you can afford it. Well, I feel like I've really disappointed my team. Sixth place outside of the uh, not gonna not gonna get any champagne, not gonna get the beautiful women. Looks like this driver's gonna fall into a state of depression, which will result in copious drug abuse and uh, the end of his racing career after such such a disappointing result. But hey, I'm in America. And it's nice and warm, which beats being in England. 
when it's wet and cold. This is not all bad. Should uh, phone mothers whilst if I had a mobile phone by me, I could phone them whilst I was driving. <laughs> Order something from them whilst in a race. That we don't have them in England. It must be another. Uh, it must be a purely American company. Why is the start car stopped on the right? Oh, it's my friend. Oh, I can have a ginger beer. Oh no, he's not a black guy. Let's do one fast lap, right? We're not going to talk for the last lap. I'm going to try and do an actual decent lap with a bit of concentration. Oh, here you go. We, well, I'm going to try and do this fast. I'm not going to talk. I'm going to focus. We should probably result in a crash. No talking. The focal lap. Can I take two places on the last lap of this race? If the wing mirror is the side of my car or behind my car, it's a problem with low FOV. <laughs> Oh, this is a crooked red guy. Ah! Just really bad over there. <laughs> so nearly rear-ended. Oh, what is he doing? Oh dear. I was proper close to rear-ending that guy there. Did that on purpose. Made it look like I was going to crash into him. Oh well, that was alright. I didn't pass them all. I think that lap was even worse than the other ones. A little bit of concentration goes a long way. That was quite good fun. Um, I apologise to the guy that... I, I don't know if I crashed into him. I think I did uh, earlier on at the start of the race, which is a bit stupid. I deserve a slap in the face for that. Uh, that was pretty good fun though, uh, considering how slow this car is. A full grid can make any car enjoyable though. I mean, this, this could be driving mopeds as long as there's... 24 cars and you're close to other people driving then it's then it's enjoyable and i think that's what with the slower cars i racing off is but um thanks for watching this video um definitely worth picking up i racing uh, on the promotion i think a company is running a free month at the moment and you'll be able to drive this very car on this very track uh until monday when they change the track but you'll be able to drive the basic cars um so it's worth getting the freebie I i'll put the comment in on the video for that for people that want to try our racing you definitely need a steering wheel or you can play it on an ipad and uh, i think uh, uh, and you can use a game pad but you, you need a force you back steering wheel to play a driving simulator um as i'm sure most people watching this youtube channel know um but yeah thanks for watching i'm gonna make some more videos soon um take care